Kingdom Come Deliverance has a unique and cryptic combat system whereby players gain levels and various skills, making them more effective. Just exactly how these levels affect your actual in-game character isn't really explained, except in an extremely vague manner. In this video I will dissect and break down the different weapons and skills in hopes of filling the void. I'd like to start out with some general combat information that may or may not be known to you. Firstly, you unlock very important techniques from training with Captain Bernard and Rite, so it is advised you complete the main quest until you receive the quest Train Hard, Fight Easy. This will allow you to dodge, parry, and feint, which are vitally important to the combat of the game. You can also repost if you block at exactly the moment your opponent swings at you, hitting for good damage and giving you an opening. Dodges are performed by pressing left or right at the moment the shield turns green when an opponent attacks, and parries function by pressing block at the moment the shield turns green. Repost can be pulled off if you block the exact moment the shield turns green, and if you are close enough to the enemy. Feints are executed by holding the attack button with your sword in one of the five directions, and letting go after you move it to another. This fakes out the enemy and allows you to strike more easily. These are not overly difficult to pull off, and should become a staple of combat for the would-be warrior. Although not mentioned above, players can engage in what is called a clinch by moving into an enemy while holding block. If the player then performs any attack or kick, they will attempt to push the enemy away, leaving them vulnerable for a follow-up. Successful clinches are easier to perform if you have higher warfare, good reaction time, and the perk Clinch Master. Clinches are a great way to gain an easy opening on an enemy, but it isn't recommended against powerful opponents who might have higher stats than you. Note, practicing clinches against Captain Bernard is not recommended, because he will win 99% of the time, when often you would win much more often against actual opponents. Secondly, and I'm directly quoting Warhorse here, Warfare skill determines how quick your swings are in combat. However, it is relative skill, so it is compared to skill of your enemy, and from that the speed is calculated. This means that when you face an enemy, your warfare skill is compared to something of theirs, I would assume defense, and your attacks are faster or slower based on how you measure up. This is why attacking easy enemies results in more hits, and also why combat gets easier as you level your warfare skill. The defense skill simply determines how long the window will be for perfect blocks and master strokes. Lastly, stamina is very important when fighting, and if you are attacked and attempting to block with no stamina, you will take a good amount of damage. Be sure to be fully fed and rested when entering combat because being tired and hungry will deplete your max stamina. Taking damage will also reduce it, so you become less effective the less health you have. Bows are affected by both agility and the bow skill, but only the bow skill actually affects how much you sway when shooting. Agility either has no effect on this, or it's so small that you can't really tell the difference. If you want to test this, you can drink an embrocation, which will increase your agility by 5 for 10 minutes, and you'll see almost no difference in your shooting. Neither higher or lower bow or agility seem to have any impact on how long it takes to draw an arrow, although it is very hard to test perfectly. I found a variance of about 1 or 2 frames faster at higher levels, but again, it's hard to get completely accurate results. Either way, it's not enough to be significant. However, different bows do take different time to fully draw, and some of these differences can be drastic depending on the bows compared. Firing low-quality arrows from high-quality bows will actually perform very badly, not only in terms of damage, but also in terms of flight pattern and distance. Be sure to use high-quality arrows from high-quality bows for best results. The longer you hold your arrow, the more your bow will sway, increasing the likelihood that you will miss your shot. For this reason, it is advised you fire within 1-2 to two seconds of your arrow being fully drawn, in order to get best results. An arrow is fully drawn when it stops moving backwards and is still. Short swords, hunting swords, and sabers all have a faster attack speed than long swords do, but they have a much shorter reach. They also scale with agility instead of strength, and gain damage based on this stat. The increases vary from blade to blade per point in agility, but it's usually 1-2% more damage per point in agility above zero. An interesting thing to note here is that each weapon has its own scaling, much like Dark Souls, so they are not all created equal. Short swords generally do a decent amount of both stab and slash damage, making them very versatile against targets that aren't heavily armored. Short sword sabers and hunting swords also possess different combos than the long sword, which you can learn as your sword skill increases. Hunting swords and sabers generally have lower defensive values than short swords, so if you're going to use one of these, I would strongly suggest using a shield as well. Axes and maces both have fewer combos than swords, but both have their uses. Both maces and axes, unlike the above, scale off strength with relatively similar scaling. You generally gain around 1-2% damage per point in strength above zero. As with above, each weapon has its own scaling, so results will vary from weapon to weapon. 
Axes have generally all around good damage of slash, stab, and blunt, making them very versatile against just about every opponent. Maces, on the other hand, have very good blunt damage, making them powerful against heavily armored foes. Both weapons have extremely poor defense when compared with most swords, so it's recommended that if you're going to use one, you use a shield. Longswords attack more slowly than agility-based swords, but they hit harder, have longer reach, and have better defense. They also scale off strength and have the best scaling of any weapon type in the game. You gain roughly 2-2.5% two damage increase per point into strength, which is over double that of many other weapons. As with other weapon types, the damage scaling varies from weapon to weapon. Longswords have the most combos of any weapon in the game and are just all around very good. If you don't know what weapon to pick, it is advised you use one until you have a chance to get your bearings. You can use a longsword with a shield if you like, but you won't be able to perform combos like you would when two-handing one. Pull arms have the longest reach of any weapon in the game and deal particularly good stab and slash damage and scale with strength. As with other weapons, their scaling varies based on the weapon, but it is somewhere around 2% damage per point. These weapons cannot be stored in your inventory, but can be picked up and wielded whenever you need a long-reaching weapon. You can usually find them in armories or places where guards frequent. Shields are useful in blocking because they not only use less stamina, but also spare your weapon's durability by taking the damage it would instead. Shields come in all different shapes, sizes, and colors, and require a modest amount of strength to use. Using a shield makes it nearly impossible to pull off combos, which is one of the reasons it is advised with axes and maces that don't have many to begin with. In short, it's the ideal tool for the defensive player and can really help keep you alive when facing multiple enemies. Stay tuned for more coverage of Kingdom Come Deliverance throughout February, and be sure to check out our other guides.